you've got a couple of options for getting underwater photos or videos. You could get a GoPro or a dedicated underwater point and shoot, but that quality is not going to be as good as your big sensor camera. You could buy a dedicated housing for that big sensor camera. They're big, bulky, and really expensive. Or you could throw your camera into something that looks like an oversized condom. This is the Altex waterproof cover. It comes in three different kits, and this is the pro version that has a viewing window on the back. It is a waterproof housing rated up to 10 meters deep. Now, I've had this for almost six months. It's traveled with me to the Arctic, Hawaii, Iceland, and a local lake. For 400 bucks for the pro version, I'm pretty happy. I will say this, if you're a dedicated diver or serious underwater photographer, then you should go with a dedicated housing built for your camera. But if you're someone that travels and wants shallower underwater shots or just serious protection from the elements, rain, dust, dirt, splashes, this melted jellyfish will do the job well. Personally, as someone that travels and really values portability, I mean, I love my folding drones, I love my small compact mirrorless cameras and compact tripod stabilizer things, I don't have room for bulky housing when I only occasionally need protection. The Altex is tiny. I mean, look how small it squishes down into, and it fits so nicely into my camera bag. I find that awesome. Now, in the past, I've used a Digipack bag. It's a cheaper option, but it's got so many seams that are just waiting to fail, and you rely on Velcro as kind of a safety backup. Velcro. One time I was river snorkeling, I looked up at the bag and the Velcro had completely come undone. Now there were secondary seals inside that saved me, but still, it, it's not great. And not to mention that this cheap plastic that you're shooting through gets scratched so easily and really affects the picture quality. The Altex uses high quality glass and a much more secure system that's not going to ruin your shot. Here's how it works. So you're going to slide the silicon cover onto the camera, and you can see that it's got a rough camera shape. That gives you some idea on how to align it up. Next, you want to attach the front element. This uses your lens's filter threads. I suggest buying for your biggest lens and then using step-up rings to fit with any smaller lenses you might want to use on this system. Now this solves another issue I had with the DigiPack, and that's the end was constantly getting into the shot. But because this front glass is attached directly to your lens, that doesn't happen. I don't even get vignetting with a 24 to 70 lens, though it's possible with the wider angle lenses that you could see some vignetting. Now you attach the rear LCD port, which is held in place with a tripod socket. If you do want to use this with your viewfinder, they make accessories that will allow that. And now you pull the cover over and attach it to the rear o-ring in the same method. A small metal o-ring acts as the seal and is held in place with a nice sturdy screw-on filter. It's the same at both ends. I do recommend you watch their install videos. You know, I, I was pretty worried that I was going to screw it up at first, but realized that you just really need to make sure that the silicon cover is evenly distributed around these ports. Everything else just kind of falls into place, and it does get easier with practice. So it's on. How the heck do you use your camera now? Well, because this material is so flexible, it's actually really easy to get to most of your camera controls. I do recommend using one of the semi-auto modes so that there's a little bit less to fiddle with. I typically use aperture priority, and with my Sony, I also have auto ISO turned on. But of course, the shutter button, dials front and back, and even the mode dial can all be accessed and switched. For me personally, I find playback a little bit more difficult to get to without moving the rear port. It really depends on the placement of the buttons in the camera you're using. I also find that this rear port gets more wiggly than I would like, even when I crank it down in that tripod socket very tight. Now, let me talk about one other drawback, and that's putting it on. It's not fast. It takes me a couple of minutes from start to finish, and this is after having used it several times, so keep that in mind. 
Overall though, I'm really happy with this Altex housing. It works great, it's flexible. I love that it can work with multiple cameras. That's an added perk. I've got my Sony a7R 3 in here right now. I've had the Canon EOS R and I can throw in my GH5 for some slick 4K 60 frame per second underwater shots. Now, they do have different sizes, covering everything from cell phones all the way up to full-size DSLRs, and loads of extra accessories, including tripod sockets, tethering cables, and a very cool dome port, which makes it much easier to get the cool split above and below water shots. Now, I haven't used that one personally, but one friend has, and it went very poorly for him very poorly. So just a word of caution, I'm reserving judgment until I get to try that accessory out on my own, but overall I'm pretty happy. Let me know in the comments if this would work for you and what watery adventure you'd like to go on. Links to this Altex are down below and if you have any questions you can leave those below as well. Hit that thumbs up button for not getting this review done until it was 40 degrees out and water temperature was a shrinkage inducing 52. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye. Or you could throw your camera in something that looks like an oversized condom. I really wish we had finished this video this summer. Oh, God.